and we see this better okay this is when we do drying drying air that move fast enough is through the surface of the food first the free water on the surface will evaporate right free water and then after that the water inside will diffuse will migrate out and then evaporate they may evaporate somewhere here before they move further out and now we look at drying rate curve drake drakes mean how fast we do it and what do we see before we look at the drying rate curve at the lab we look at the moisture reduction curve moisture content reduction curve this is drying time a to b it is initial period we see it in the y you just start up with the process and then from b to c we reduce the moisture content linearly linearly means it's a straight line kind of straight line and then from c to d we reduce the moisture content but not linearly anymore it becomes slower and slower and people can say that here we remove free water and on the surface mostly water on the surface and also free water can be inside but move out freely and here water become more bound difficult to remove okay now when we convert this back into dry rate curve what do we see a here is a what is dry rate how many kilogram of water do we remove per uh, surface area of the food and the time we do drying this is the rate determine of the rate how fast do we remove water and b to c the rate is constant here from b to c if you convert back to rate it will be constant means that what after the same period of time you remove the same amount of of water it's called constant drying rate and then from c to d to e it's called falling rate because now to reduce the same amount of water you need longer and longer time you need longer and longer time to reduce the same amount of water or you reduce less and less amount of water after the same amount of time okay so here is falling rate because the rate is dropping and this axis represent free moisture up to here you have equilibrium moisture content this is the tax is is plan a b initial period where the food need to get warm up before it start to evaporate the water constant and then falling and now it is important to understand this one and then you understand all the drying process again drying is a heat and mass transfer simultaneously a process with those two exchange what do we see the first one initial periods the second one constant rate the third one falling rate and this one represent for drying time and this blue curve represent for the water pressure of food exactly the water activity of food and the drying air the air we use to dry the food has a water vapor pressure as well and this is actually what of the air relative humidity of the air relative humidity of the air represent the water vapor pressure of the air of the water inside that air and then here we have water pressure of the food means the water activity of the food the air we introduce into a drying chamber has a dry bum temperature T air uh, means a dry bum temperature and this is a temperature of food which is explain again we explain already in this option isotherm if we put a cup of fresh milk 
And if we put here milk powder overnight on the table, what happens with the weight of fresh milk? Reduces or increases? Reduces. The water activity of milk is almost 1. It's like 0 0.99. Okay. Relative humidity of the air may be 85%. Water activity of the of the dry milk powder may be 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Now what do you see? Why fresh milk loses weight? Because you see that water activity in the food is higher than the relative humidity of the air. So water evaporates more than the reabsorption. But here, water activity here is very small compared to relative humidity, so vapor from the air will be absorbed into the milk powder more than the evaporation. And then what? After a while, this will gain weight and this will lose weight. So now we go back to drying. In order to do drying, the relative humidity of the air should be smaller than the water activity of the of the food. If water activity is higher than the relative humidity of the air, it will not evaporate. Because water, the mass transfer, water from the food will go to the the air, right? Heat from the air will go to the the food. Now when these two differences when these two differences are large, then we have fast drying. When the difference becomes smaller, smaller, then it becomes slow drying. You see, during drying, these differences now become smaller. Okay, what else do you need to look at? You look at the temperature of food. During concentrate period, the temperature of food, there is increase to the temperature of the air? No. The temperature of food during the concentrate period is equal to what temperature of the air? Wet bum temperature of the air. Why wet bum? Because during this period, what happened with water? Free water will evaporate. I mean the liquid water evaporate into vapor. This process absorb energy or release energy is absorb energy, right? It takes heat from the air to evaporate. And when it evaporates, it uptake energy, so it gives what effect? Cooling effect or heating effect? Cooling effect. When water evaporates freely from the food, it cools down the food. This is why the food temperature does not increase, just equal to evaporation temperature. When you drop a drop of alcohol on your skin, how do you feel? Warm or cool? When you drop a drop of alcohol on your skin, you feel cool, right? Why? Because alcohol evaporates very fast. Alcohol evaporates means uptake energy. It will take energy from your skin, from the surrounding air. It makes your skin cool down and you feel cool, right? You lose heat. In this here, during concentrate again, concentrate period, the temperature of food will not increase to the temperature of the dry bum uh, of the air because the water evaporation. We can explain this by the wet bum temperature, the concept we discussed in some slides here. But then, now free water, or f water on the surface already evaporated all. Now the remaining water is bound, it's more difficult to evaporate. Then now the temperature of food now start to increase. Then approach the temperature of the air. What happened with water activity of food? Because now we have free water, still, we still have free water, so water activity of food is still like almost one, high. But then when water becomes bowed and more bowed, more strongly bowed, the water activity will go down. And then we now approach the, the humidity of the air that we use to dry.
The second point that we need to know is that actually during the falling rate periods, the food will change a lot, not during the constant rate period. We change color, we lose some bioactive component, we sensitive component, because only during falling rate that the temperature of food now become high. And then you may change the color of food, you may lose some vitamins. And the third point you need to memorize is that the falling rate period is normally longer than the constant rate period. Because it's more difficult to remove bulk water than remove free water. And the fourth point that you need to memorize now dry in is not only a matter of temperature but also the difference in water pressure between food and air so these are the two driving forces you need to know. so in the past oh we think drying we have to heat the air up to dry but now we can do drying at room temperature we can do drying even at minus 20 degrees c Right? We don't need to heat as long as we can maintain the what? Different in water pressure. This is what become even more important. Okay, that's number four. Not only the matter of temperature different, but should be the difference between water activity of food, relative humidity of air. Should maintain to try. Number five. Why do we normally increase the temperature of air to dry? This you can answer based on what we discussed from the morning up to now. Why? Of course, you can dry without increasing temperature, but normally conventional drying, for example, they increase the temperature of air. Why increase the temperature of air then you can dry faster? You remember, the temperature and the relative humidity will go together. When you increase the temperature, then you reduce what of air? Relative humidity of the air, right? So you can actually increase this difference. You increase the temperature, you increase the mobility of water. Mobility of water in the food, and then it evaporates faster. You lower the viscosity of the food. The temperature is higher, the viscosity is lower. The mobility of water, the diffusion of water become faster, and then you can also dry faster. Okay, and then you go on the street, you see many times that they put steam bun cake, you know, steam bun, bun bao, in a hot chamber. The temperature inside here may be 60 degrees C. They put here whole day, several days, but the cake are not dry, it's always wet. Why? You see high temperature, but the cakes are not dry. We look at drying. In order to dry, what do we need to maintain? Not only the different in temperature, but also the different in, in this one. Do we have here in, the, in this chamber? They use water here. They heat water, and the water will evaporate, and we make this hot. When water evaporates, actually the air inside here is saturated with vapor. It cannot take vapor from the food anymore. That's why the food is not dry. This is actually called steaming, not dry in, but steaming. You know steaming? You steam to cook the food, but here you don't cook, you just keep it warm. As it will not dry, because what again? The air inside is saturated with vapor. This one is already a hundred percent cannot move water from the food to the air anymore. Good? So we are done with second part. We will go to drying system, different drying technology. But I think we should take break here today.